Certain dates in history carve a permanent mark, especially within the motorcycle community. Well, the clash between two outlaws crushed the peace, and lives and left deadly questions. This is the story of the infamous Waco Showdown. Number 1. The Eruption of Rivalry On that fateful day of May 17, 2015 in Waco, Texas, things took an unexpected turn at the Twin Peaks restaurant. It was an ordinary gathering of over 200 individuals, including members from motorcycle clubs like the Banditos and Cossacks, and their allies, who quickly flew into a violent shootout. Little did they know, law enforcement had been positioned outside. In actuality, it was keeping a watchful eye on the situation. After that, chaos exploded as shots were fired and the consequences were tragic. Nine bikers lost their lives with 18 others wounded or injured. In the aftermath, 177 individuals were arrested and held, accused of participating in organized crime. Yet as time unfolded, the prosecution's handling of the case faced widespread criticism. Number 2. The Epic Clash of Motorcycle Clubs in 2014, the Banditos Motorcycle Club found itself listed alongside notorious gangs like the Crips, Bloods, and the Aryan Brotherhood. They claimed themselves as a Tier 2 threat by the Texas Department of Public Safety. Surprisingly, the Cossacks weren't evaluated in the same manner. The assessment highlighted that the Banditos operated secretly, avoiding high-profile activities typically associated with street gangs. You know, drive-by shootings. Steve Crook, who is the executive director of Midwest Outlaw Motorcycle Gang Investigators Association, would later explain this dispute. The dispute resolved around the rights of Texas outlaw motorcycle clubs to wear jackets. Certainly, the Banditos claim the authority to approve all such patches. Well, dominancy is at its peak. According to police accounts, the Banditos aimed to flex their muscle, making it clear that Waco belonged to them. In response, the Cossacks disobediently claimed Waco as their territory and decided to attend the meeting uninvited, ready to make a stand. Law enforcement becomes aware of the gathering. The Twin Peaks restaurant had agreed to host the meeting, but when concerns were raised, the management proved uncooperative. Ultimately, it was adding to the tension surrounding the event. All in all, the stage was set for an explosive confrontation. It was fueled by a simmering turf war, past altercations, and a clash of egos. Sadly, the shootout claimed nine lives, leaving a trail of wounded and injured bikers in its wake. Indeed, big loss. Number 3. The Explosive Waco Biker Showdown The tension bubbled beneath the Texas sun when all the motorcycle clubs gathered at the Twin Peaks restaurant in Waco. A seemingly inoffensive dispute over a parking spot quickly spiraled out of control. Guys, it was leading to a deadly clash. At precisely 12.24 p.m., the crackle of gunfire shattered the calmness. Simply, it dropped the scene into chaos. Law enforcement officers on the scene faced a daunting challenge, invoking active shooter protocols to swiftly respond to the mass shooting. The aftermath revealed a grim reality. Nine bikers lay lifeless, while 18 others fought for their lives in hospitals. It was a scene of carnage that shook the Waco community. It reminded them of the haunting echoes of the infamous Branch Davidian siege. In the aftermath, as investigations unfolded, prosecutor Michael Jarrett described a disturbing sight captured on video, banditos executing Cossacks and Cossacks retaliating in kind. The brutality of the clash left the community reeling and led authorities to argue for high bonds to ensure public safety. The devil is in the details. You see, weapons seized from the scene painted a grim picture of the deadly encounters. Chains, brass knuckles, knives, clubs, and batons were among them. While the exact detail of the fatal shots remained under scrutiny, the investigation would require months to determine the full extent of the ballistics evidence. Here, security footage provided a chilling glimpse into the chaos. A lone figure of bikers seeks refuge within the restaurant. Desperation led them to huddle in bathrooms and overflow into the kitchen. Desperately, they were trying to escape the violence. However, the parking lot remained unseen and eventually left its secrets concealed. As the dust settled, the Waco Police Department revealed that three officers fired their rifles that struck four bikers. The investigation continued, and vehicle forfeiture documents were released for additional details. These details shed light on the events leading up to the deadly clash. No doubt, it is a clash of egos and territorial disputes when simple parking space battles escalated into a blood-soaked battle. Overall, this showdown would forever be etched into the annals of the city's history. Its consequences would leave a scar on the community's collective memory and raise difficult questions about the limits of power and loyalty. Number 4. Arrest Spawns and Controversy Unfold The aftermath of the shootout in Waco revealed a staggering number of weapons recovered from the crime scene. As spokesman Patrick Swanton disclosed, Swiss Army knives, pocket knives, handguns, and even an AK-47-style rifle were found among the arsenal. A total of 320 weapons were seized. Just imagine the magnitude of violence. 
In the following days of the incident, law enforcement swiftly made arrests. Initially, there were 192 individuals connected to the shootout. Among them, 171 faced charges of participating in organized crime. The McLennan County Jail became their temporary residence as the legal process unfolded. Now take a closer look at the demographics. Of the 171 charged with organized criminal activity, 124 were white males, 41 were Hispanic males, there were white females, two were black females, and one was a Native American female. The clash had drawn individuals from various backgrounds. They were uniting them in a web of criminal allegations. Disgusting, right? Justice of the Peace W.H. Pete Peterson set a severe tone by establishing a $1 million bond for each suspect. He aimed to send a clear message considering the loss of nine lives and the fact that many of the individuals involved were from out of town. However, not all bond procedures went smoothly. Three suspects were released after their bonds were mistakenly set at significantly lower amounts. Swift action was taken to rectify the situation, with their bonds being reset to two million and arrest warrants issued. The suspects cooperated and arranged their surrender, eager to comply with the revised terms. The law enforcement community faced threats in the aftermath of the shootout, prompting investigations into their veracity. Police officers reported receiving several menacing messages, heightening concerns about their safety and the potential for further violence. As the legal proceedings moved forward, defense preparations were put into motion. 75 suspects requested qualified public defenders experienced in handling first-degree crime charges, though Judge Matt Johnson had to call in defenders from neighboring countries to bridge the gap. The caseload was substantial and the involvement of defenders from different jurisdictions was necessary to ensure proper representation. Amidst the arrest, a series of personal stories emerged. Kenneth Carlisle, who happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, was arrested while pulling into the parking lot in his wife's car. He faced charges of organized crime. It is a troubling consequence. Months passed and the legal proceedings continued. Marcus Pilkington became the last arrested biker to be released from jail, but the absence of murder charges or additional accusations left haunting questions about accountability and the full extent of the legal effects. Number 5. The Waco Trials As the dust settled, many would question the handling of the case. They brought forth a series of trials, but the path to justice proved to be a rocky one. With mistrials, dismissed cases, and lingering civil rights lawsuits, the handling of the case raised eyebrows and fueled criticisms of overreach. Surely the whole situation is leaving a bitter taste of injustice in the mouths of those seeking closure. Thanks for sticking around to the very end. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share it to stay updated with our daily content. We appreciate your continued support and engagement.